Hey everybody, Chris here again. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're gonna have some fun with hardware. As you look at the table here, recently I picked up a lot of Compaq LTE 5000 series. I think we've got a 5300, as evidenced here by this screen, and I think we have two 5280s as well. Yes, there's a 5280, and we've got another 5280. So there we go, those are the three that we've picked up today. And I've done a little bit of diagnostics on these three machines. Two out of three will power on, the third one will not, and all three have bad screens. So here's my goal for today. I wanna to get one working machine, and I think we can do it. How can we do that when we have three bad screens? Great question. Well, it just so happens that I have this screen here from a 5400, which will work on the 5280s, one of the 5280s. So, as you can see, I've already kind of torn into these a little bit. Let's do a little bit of, uh, of testing of them to see what we're looking at here. So right here, we've got a 5280. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to video and power, and we'll power it on. You can see it powering on there. And our monitor should go white, so it's starting up. And you can hear it seeking. And look at that, this one has a 64 megabyte memory upgrade in it. And actually all three of them do. So I'm very excited because I now have three 64 megabyte memory upgrades for, five, for LTE 5000 machines. Okay, so this one's good. I'm gonna take this and set it off to the side for now since we're not gonna do much more with that one, I think. All right, this one here has a very nice cheddar cheese keyboard, as you can see. That was an accessory you can get with the 5300s. Ah, just kidding. So this obviously would be in need of some retro writing. We can test this one out. And despite the cheesy keyboard, I think of the three, this one's in the best shape. Because this one actually has a floppy drive and a hard drive inset and a battery inset whereas the other machines were missing some. This one's booting up with 16 megs of memory because I actually took out the 64 meg card. So I think this one here is gonna be winner, winner, chicken dinner when it comes to doing some sort of a repair. Though maybe what we should do is swap out that orange keyboard for a nice white keyboard that we have on the third one. Of course, the third one, oh boy, doesn't have any sort of like a hard drive cover. I do have a floppy for it, doesn't have a battery either. So I think that we can make one good one out of the three. Let's test this one. So this one over here is actually the 5300. Uh, Put that off to the side. We'll do some testing. We'll instantly, and we plow it on, look what we see. All the lights light up. So this one has some sort of a short in it. Either the processor card, which is here, the motherboard, which is here, or the DC inverter, which is right under here. I'm suspecting that's the problem with this. Maybe in the future, we'll spend some time diagnosing it. Okay, so that's what we've got. Let's take this one and set it off to the side for just a minute. Now let's look at the screens. So as noted, this is a 5400 screen, which we're going to use. It's a little bit different, it's a little bit bigger. You can tell it's a little bit bigger than the other screens, which we'll look at in a minute because it has smaller speaker grills. Unfortunately though, this one is not pristine, but at least the panel is good. This screen has a very evident bad panel and then it's cracked. So there's not much we can do with it. Also missing a slider here and the hinges. Hinges are actually okay on this one. Not in great shape. We could probably tighten that up. This one came like this, shifted. As I open it up, it's a total lost cause. There weren't any screws holding things in. <laughs> Why? They all broke free. So there's really not a whole lot we can save from this machine. The back panel is bad. Actually, there is one thing we can save from this machine. Look at this. We have one good screen hinge, which is really good. When these things break, they're hard to find. So that's good. Maybe we can save an LCD inverter. 
Maybe we can save uh, this module here, maybe the cord, but otherwise there's really not a whole lot that we can do with that. Let's set this off to the side. Next screen. Missing uh, sliders on both sides, but it does have the actual hinges. And this screen is also bad. It shows up very, very blurry or something. Something is wrong with it. Maybe there's some parts that we can save from it. Who knows? Maybe it has a bad inverter, so maybe we can switch that out and do some testing there. But for the time being, we're going to set this one off to the side. And finally, we have this one here, which I haven't taken apart, but it doesn't quite power on right either. But maybe it has a bad inverter, so maybe we can switch it out, though the hinges on this one are extremely bad. But again, that might just be a tightening issue. Maybe the screws are, uh, need a good turn. Maybe they're just a little bit loose. So. That's what we've got. All right. Now, my 5400 screen does have a broken hinge. So maybe that'll be the first thing we go ahead and fix here. So I've already popped all the screws out. Now that I've gotten this apart like this, these are extremely brittle. So we're just going to take a small screwdriver like that and pop out this outer connector here. We got to be very, very gentle. And we're actually probably better off popping from the inside. If you can see that. Let's take it this way. Once again, these are very brittle. If we pop it like this, chances are good it'll break. Oh! Okay, we lucked out, it came out easy. These, these clips here tend to break. So we've got that popped out. We can now pull this out, which has got a broken latch. This is a good one here with a good latch. I think it's the right side, it looks to be. So we can pop that in, like so. And we can pop this on. Slide it up just a little bit. All right, good fix. So with that, we can put things back together here. Let's go ahead and do that. Everything's all connected here to the inverter board. Cables are routed well. This machine, I think all the screws are good and tight, but let's give it a test. It looks good, looks good. All right, so I think we're good there. So let's put the lid back on. snaps in place. Yeah, once again, this casing is not in the best shape, but I tried to check and see if I could switch out this panel and put it into one of the other casings. They won't fit. They're all just a little bit different. Okay. Snap together. Snap, snap. Four screws, four little spacers, and we're good to go. All right, let's put it all back together. So we need four screws like this. In it goes. Tighten them up. We've got some nice rusty screws that came out of some of these machines as well. We'll save those for last as we put together parts of the machines. Actually, we'll try this one. All right, good and tight, good and tight. That screw is a little rusty, but you know what? Actually, it'll be hidden by a uh, these little covers here, so maybe we'll just go ahead and leave it. <laughs> we'll use a rusty screw here. Change of plans. Okay. Fourth screw goes here. So we had one, two, three, and four. All back together. Now these little nubs that are kind of rounded like this go in the bottom. And chances are good I'll put it in the wrong way and then have to fix it. Actually, that, that looks okay. And then we've got a little nub here. All right. Let's grab this one here. Put it in. And this one here. Put it in. All right. 
So this guy, despite his imperfections, is good to go. But I tell you what, I think we should go ahead and update the uh, label on the back. Because this says 5400, and this is not going to be a 5400, despite being somewhat of a Frankenstein. There we go. I think that'll be a nice home for it. What do you say? And let's go find one of our 5280 screens, since this is a 5280. How about this nice one here? Actually, this one's in decent shape. Where's the totally trashed one? Ah, here it is. So as you remember from earlier, this is the one that's totally trashed. So let's use it. And despite the yellowing, I think the sticker looks like it's in pretty nice shape, wouldn't you say? Okay. He's feeling a little naked right now. So the question is, which way do we want it to go on? Because I see these stickers on both ways. I kind of like it that when the machine is upright that you can see the sticker on. So let's put it on this way. Okay, not perfect. Not perfect, but we now have an LTE 5280 with a little bit of crazy glue to get off later. But that's fine, right? At least you get the idea. I think if we scrub that off there, that'll look half decent at least. Okay, let's set that aside. So the next thing I think we should attack is this very cheese looking keyboard here. So let's go ahead and pop the floppy drive out. Let's set that aside. Let's pop the battery out. We'll set that aside. Ah, you can see that uh, the battery started to corrode. Ooh, this one's in really rough shape. Oh my. Well, there won't be much to use there for a rebuild later, but that's okay. And let's pull out the hard drive tray. It actually was conveniently already loose. So we'll put that off to the side. And now we can take the keyboard off. So to get the keyboard off, since we've already taken the uh, display panel off, we've got some of it disconnected, but we can disconnect this here. Flip it over. And then we get to take out one, two, three, four screws. Really helps if you have the right kind of screwdriver. Of course, Compaq, what kind of screws does it use? Torx. So I don't have a Torx screwdriver. With as many LTEs as I own, I should. I'm probably committing some sort of a crime. And actually, while we're down here, let's look at one other thing. Let's look at the battery, the CMOS battery. Eh, he doesn't look too bad. We'll leave him in for now. You can see there's not any corrosion or explosion. Eh, there might be a little bit of corrosion, but we're going to leave that in for now. All right, so at this point, we should be able to free the keyboard. Little bit of spudging to do, or you can just kind of pull like I did. <laughs> but it catches, it catches underneath here just a little bit. And you can just really slide something in there and give it a little pop and you'll be in shape. Pretty, pretty easy to get this out. You don't need a spudger. And I guess if you're a purist, you could have one. Okay. Oh, there's a couple more screws. One, two, three more. And one of them's missing. Let's set that aside. Actually, two of them are missing. Oh, brother. Yeah, this machine's in pretty rough shape. But when we're all done, it'll be nice again. Oh, and this one's loose. 
Yeah. Isn't this machine lucky that it's found me because it's going to get some good repair. Okay, just like that, off it comes. Now we pop off the mouse, which is right here. And the keyboard is a little edge connector here or cable connector here, ribbon cable. And the keyboard's off. Look at that. Okay, let's peek inside while we're here. So down here you can see the DC inverter card. This is the processor card. Motherboard, fan, and of course the little LCD panel. Ooh, how did that happen? I wasn't being careful, was I? Uh, indicator lights, things along those lines. So there it is. Not much to it once you get, get it all taken apart. But it's nice in that these are very modular, so they're very easy to work on. All right. Let's set this aside for just a minute and grab ourselves the 5300. And that nice looking keyboard there. Look at that. That's a beauty. Well, relatively speaking. So let's go ahead and let's make that available. Actually, one thing I want to fix before we get any further. I saw this when I was taking it apart. There we go. Now we're good to go. That's the PCM CIA door. I wonder if there's any cards in there. Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. I'll put this guy over here. Now try not to get confused <laughs> as we swap these things around. All right, so this keyboard we're gonna put here on this machine. We'll give them a couple of little pushes here and we'll snap into place on the bottom. Okay. Let's start on the bottom this time. Should be good and back together for that. Let's continue. So, while we were working along here, you might have heard a clank. This guy popped out. And I think he popped out on this one too. So we'll go ahead and put him back. Okay, so next up, we get to put the screen back on. Except for it's not really back on, it's really a replace since we're going to be using our lovely redone 5280 screen here from a 5400. So for these, I find it's easiest to kind of slide it in a little bit, connect up all the cables. This one here is for the backlight, I believe. Then we have a cable here for the main video display and also a speaker. Okay, so we're good there. Okay. So next up, we have uh, two grounding screws, which also hold the keyboard down. So here's one here. We can use a nice rusty one for this. Nobody will ever see it. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> oh no, come out, come out. Well, that's just great fun, isn't it? Let's see if we can force him out there. There we go. <laughs> and what do you know? We had a, a stowaway as well. So let's put him in. Okay, we're back in business. Slide that in there, and I'll try and be a little more careful this time. I'm not gonna promise. This guy does have a tendency to spring back though, doesn't he? So let's hold that down, put the screw in. Get it just a little bit tight. There we go. I don't know what happened there, but he's nice and rusty. Okay. We got that in. Let's kind of push that down a little bit so it'll make it easier to put the top cover on. I think they call it the CPU cover. For this screw, I always use one of these because these are impossible to put in otherwise. So we can just kind of set that in there a little bit. And we can kind of twist it just a touch to get it set and started, let go, and we're all set. Now we can finish the job. <laughs> yeah, how about that? This cable's got a little bit of spring to it. Let's uh, bring it in a bit. All right. 
There we go. Now actually that we have it in the cable, it's a little bit easier. So let's just give it a nice twist. Yeah, that's one of the more fun ones to put in. I want to kind of slide it over just a little bit, so we're going to hold that as we tighten it. He's tightening right up right there. I was a little concerned there for a minute that it wasn't going to tighten in all the way, but it did. Okay. How about a little power on test before we get any further? Plug him in. Powering up. No smoke yet. Let's turn the sound up. Let's see if we can go into setup here with F10. And of course, we don't have a floppy drive or anything else in, so it's a little bit hard to see exactly what's going on here. Looks like we're in setup. We have a working mouse, hey, 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 and a working keyboard, at least some of the keys. Great. Well, let's finish up putting them back together and let's do some more testing with them. All right. So next up, we need to grab one of our uh, CPU covers. And despite this one having somebody's password written on it, I think it's in the best shape of the three. So we're going to use it. Now, what I really should have done is actually connect the bottom screws first. I'm going to slide this over a little bit. He's not quite in there, right? Actually, let's do it the right way. Just so we can get that LCD anchored. Let's go ahead and put the two bottom screws in. And they can be a little tricky, so probably not a bad idea. As you can see, it's not quite lined up right. You have to kind of shimmy this up and down just a little bit till you get the alignment right, and then it should go in, hopefully. We're having a bit of a hard time. And once you get it in far enough, it'll kind of self-align. So that's always good. Get these extra tight since they hold the LCD. All right, we're good. One more. Once again, get the shimmy up just a touch until you get it in there set right. Not too much now. There we go. Okay. Three out of four ain't bad anyway. I think it's in there. Yeah, okay. So now let's put the CPU cover on. And now that we have that on, we can actually bend this back a little bit. Just kind of push things in the best we can. And that should snap in. Yeah. All right, now let's pull it forward. It's kind of the easiest way to do it. And then from that there, what I tend to do is clamp down a little bit. And actually, that lined up really nice. So for this, it's going to be three more screws. There's old Rusty. That one doesn't look too bad. Let's go with it. All right, that one looks like he tightened up right away, so that's good. Two more. That's Rusty. That one looks nice. Put that one in the middle. I want to say it's easier to put the middle one in before you put the other ones in. And the one over here. Okay, let's put a 64 megabyte memory upgrade in here since we have a couple of them. And actually this came out of this machine. So there's your Compaq LTE 5000 series 64 megabyte memory upgrade. Let's go ahead and just put that in there. Okay, pop that in so it seats good. And then to secure that are these two little funky screws that have that don't have threads up all the way. That's how you can tell it goes into the memory module door. Easiest to set it up on its end. Gravity is your friend. We're gonna get that put in there. Screw actually will push it into the socket a little bit. Make sure it's well seated. Okay. 
And we should have another one right here. Okay, and it goes. All set. Let's power it up. Hmm. Goes around, comes around. So let's go ahead and put a floppy drive in here. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put the battery in too, why not? The battery, floppy drive, and the hard drive isn't going to do us much good because there's nothing in the case. It's empty. So what I'll probably end up putting in here is a um, 44 pin to compact flash adapter and putting a compact flash card in here. But for now, that guy isn't going to do us much good. Let's power it up. Let's see if the floppy drive's any good. Oh, I heard a very faint sound just now. That wasn't very loud at all. Let's see it here. Uh-oh. Floppy disk fault. I'm going to venture to guess that that floppy drive has problems. Let's try another drive. Hey, I hear signs of life. Hey, look at that, starting DOS. Well, good, so we have at least one good floppy drive. What we'll try and do on this one at some point is clean the heads and see if it comes back to life. If not, in some cases, we can actually get lucky and replace the internal drive within the mechanism. So we might as well go get a hard drive and put it in here and see if it'll boot something. Let me go grab one. And not only did I grab a hard drive from my LT5380, I also grabbed a wireless card. Let's go ahead and power this off for now. Take the floppy disk out. Put the hard disk in. And a wireless card in. See what we get. Oh, here it's spinning right up. Eighty megs of memory. Not much by way of sound. We'll have to look at that. Hey, here we go. Let's boot into DOS. Network. Looks like it found the card. Let's go look at some games here. Yeah, we're not getting much by way of sound, that's for sure. Future Chris here, so now we have sound support. So how do we fix the sound? Well, all the work we did to swap the keyboard and the screen to another machine, I did again. <laughs> Onto the other 5280, apparently. Um, there's some sort of an issue with the sound card. Typically, what I found is these little dials that control the audio control tend to go bad. And maybe with some contact cleaner, I could have straightened it up. But I didn't want to mess with it, so I just went ahead and swapped it out. So something else I did was went and got some of these indoor mounting squares. And they have just enough little cushion to them that they make for great little fixes for drive doors that don't want to stay shut.
it kind of flexes a little bit, it flexes back. It's a good quick fix. So with that, we should be able to put this on and we should be all set. I'll take it. Okay, well, not really sure what's going on with the sound, but everything else seems to be working. So uh, there we have it, uh, LTE 5280, all set to go. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if, if you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, feel free to give it a thumbs down, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.